Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Time to pull out your battle axe. Uh, we're about to uh, fire up the OS Wars once again, something that we tend to do every other hour in the chat room at live.perillo.com. I get so many people, and I, I don't mean to um, you know sound snippy, but so many people ask me what the best operating system is or what they should do, and should they get this, should they get that. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, the bottom line is always get what you want. <laughs> That's the way it always has been. And instead of me asking you uh, what you're using right now for an operating system, I'm going to ask you what was your most favorite operating system of all time. I mean, from the beginning of operating systems, as uh, you have known them, as you have used them, what is, uh, you can't talk about the ones in the future, the ones that haven't been released, the ones in the past, or potentially present day. And you may say that your favorite of all time happens to be the one that you're running now. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But don't just don't just say the operating system. Give me a good reason. Give everybody a reason why that was your favorite or happens to be your favorite, okay? Let's try to add a little bit of intelligence. Don't slag somebody else's choice for an operating system. That's no way to win an argument. And uh, usually when you do that, you... Um, you show more of your inadequacies and uh, just lack of, well, respect uh, to the other person for their choices. Um, and, and honestly, when you argue against somebody else's operating system, I've seen so many people make just mistakes. Uh, you know, they, they're perpetuating these rumors uh, or just gross inaccuracies. Uh, so, again, try to keep it to yourself, your own choices, and why. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because uh, da, 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 I'm holding onto a piece of paper. That must mean it's a top five list. Top five things to take into consideration before switching operating systems. Because, you know, you may be uh, deciding to float from one to the other. I know plenty of people who are right there, uh, right on the cusp uh, between one and another, or possibly between uh, more than two. So if you're going to be going from Windows to OS 10 or OS 10 to Linux or any combination thereof, there's some things you should know before doing anything. Number five, stability. You want to make sure that the operating system you're going to use is functional. A buggy operating system is more or less useless. Uh, from this person's experience, XP is the most practical Windows operating system to use at this moment. I'm relatively new to Linux, he notes, but my favorite distro is Ubuntu because of the ease of migration over from XP. Mac OS X I know absolutely nothing about, but I've heard that Leopard is somewhat more buggy than previous versions. I haven't tried it. This is only what I've heard. And to be fair, every operating system is buggy. Uh, every operating system is going to have security issues, and every operating system is going to be riddled with hiccups uh, whenever software updates are released. So uh, that's... That's across the board. I'm not picking on one over the other. I'm not saying one is better than the other at this point. I'm just saying it's it's pretty much... It doesn't matter what your operating system is, it's still software. Number four, compatibility with hardware. This is mostly for Windows and Linux, and OS X hardware is pretty much controlled by Apple. Well, mm, kind of, but... Mm, mm, be careful when you're talking about things you're not fully sure about here, Shadowfang36. Check to make sure that your video card, sound card, printer, motherboard, anything that has drivers for is compatible with the operating system of your choice. Some dated hardware where <laughs> some dated hardware will not be supported by some of your newer operating systems. Speaking mostly to Vista, make sure that everything you have will work in the future. Well, there's some exceptions to this. Um, you know, not all hardware that runs on OS X is controlled by Apple. And in fact, the open source community has come to the rescue uh, for a lot of legacy hardware and even hardware that is, you know, modern hardware existing with modern operating systems where official drivers hasn't, uh, haven't been released yet. Uh, there's a program called Mac Cam, which will allow you to use your, like, decade-old webcam on OS X. Uh, it's open source, and there is a guy out there who has developed a pretty much... Uh, a driver for every webcam out there but to use it on use those webcams on Linux so you have to be less reliant 
on the people who created the hardware and more reliant on the community that cares enough to keep that support for the hardware alive in modern operating systems. The compatibility, again, this is another check mark all across the board. Doesn't matter which operating system you're using. Uh, you've, you do your best to check hardware compatibility as much as possible. Don't just, and here's the thing, I've learned to completely distrust any kind of logo or certified logo that says, hey, we're compatible with this. That doesn't mean anything anymore. You need to check the forums. You need to check with the community. You need to check. And when all else fails, don't do it, okay? Don't think you're going to be any different than anybody else out there who's run into issues with hardware and the software. I mean, you, you may be lucky, but just be very, very, very cautious. Number three, support. Know where to go for help. You're bound to come into problems whenever doing something for the first time. Find websites or communities with experienced users of the product that you can reach to for help when you need it. Example, when I first installed Ubuntu, the X server would not detect my graphical hardware no matter what I did. I went to the Ubuntu forums and I was directed to a problem called a program called NV, this is a good program, that automatically set up the X server for me and installed the latest NVIDIA drivers for my video card. Um, it, again, that comes down to community. Connect with the community. Uh, you know, I'm really your your last line of defense for support. You can come by the chat room and ask people in here. Uh, and certainly, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to direct you, you know, whichever direction I can. Uh, but chances are, if you're looking to troubleshoot issues, uh, if it's something simple, the chat room might be able to help. Uh, if it's something a little more complex, it's probably better off posted in a forum. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got forums on LockerGnome, help.lockerGnome.com, although those will largely be migrating into the new version of LockerGnome, which we're working on. And we're also going to have an official Q&A section in LockerGnome as well. Uh, so my, I guess, uh, my community is, is, is going to be able to help you, or you'll be able to find any other community on the web uh, that can help you with that. Uh, number two, have a lifeline. Data is bound to be lost when installing and uninstalling operating systems. Make sure that all critical data on your current OS is backed up and can be restored on your new OS. When in doubt, I recommend partitioning the empty portion of your hard drive, install the OS you want, and try it out. This way, your entire system hasn't been hosed, and you can revert to what you were using before. Dual booting is also a great option for compatibility, hardware, and software. Uh, and then he notes his current setup that he's like doing a whole bunch of uh, dual bootings. Um, I would recommend, though, before going down the dual boot route, if you want to try something new, um, buy a virtual machine software. You download a demo of the virtual machine software. You know VMware uh, has, uh, is a sponsor of our broadcast, and you can run Linux in VMware, Windows in VMware, and you can even run Mac OS X Server in VMware. So uh, bottom line is you know, protect yourself. Uh, make sure you're not just w running into this thing saying, yes, I'm tired of Windows, I'm moving to Ubuntu. Or I'm tired of OS X, I'm moving to Windows. Doesn't matter. I mean, you, you just don't go blindly. Make sure you will be ready for it. I mean, one of the reasons it took me, well, well over a year to make the transition between, uh, you know, living m largely inside of Windows to largely inside of OS X for my primary operating system. I mean, I have, I, I surround myself with PCs and Macs and Linux and Windows and OS X, but that transition time for me I mean it wasn't immediate I mean I had to make sure I had to be sure I had to wait for the software to be ready I had to wait for the hardware to be ready uh, I mean it, it, it wasn't an overnight thing and anybody who thought that well number one wasn't doing the research number two doesn't know me a, a darn bit because I, I take very calculated uh, risks and I, I otherwise I, I would just be kind of lost be going I don't know what's going on uh, I, I'd be knee-jerk uh, reacting to just about any issue that I ran into, at least I had time to adjust. So allow yourself that amount of time. Allow yourself a way to escape. Number one, can the OS do what you want it to do? Hmm. A key point for Linux is the eye candy. It's great, we love it, and it's why a lot of people use it over Windows or OS X. And I think he's talking specifically about Compiz Fusion. Um, 
anything beyond that, I don't know if I'd say Linux is high on the eye candy. But this isn't always practical. If a program you need for school or your work is only available in Windows and you're running pure OS X or Linux machine, you need to find either a comparable application, run a virtual machine, or reinstall Windows. This is another reason why I strongly recommend not confining yourself to only one operating system. Different operating systems are good for different things. Take advantage of this and use it at your disposal. You know, this is a, it is a fantastically balanced list. There's a few points that I take issue with, but you know, it all again goes back to you. Uh, don't cut yourself off from having a fantastic experience. Try something new, try something different so that at least you know. And then don't stop at, well, I don't like it because the my keyboard shortcuts don't work on that operating system. Well, it's a different operating system. I don't like it because uh, I like my uh, uh, program to do. But, you know, maybe there's a different way. Maybe there's a better way. Give it a chance. Don't just dismiss it outright. You're not doing yourself any favor, and you're certainly not doing the discussion any favor. Uh, I can tell when I'm having a conversation with someone who obviously has never tried it or given it a good, quote-unquote, college try. I had one person, well, okay, I'm going to call him out. I love Steve Bass, known him for years. He's a hardcore geek. Uh, you know, uh, he, he writes for PC World. He's been sending out, um, you know, a newsletter for a while that, you know, has now evolved into a blog. He blogged the other day that he wasn't too hip on OS X because he says, well, I couldn't select all by doing Control A. What's up with that? And I'm like, uh, and then he stopped there. Um, well, in Mac OS X, instead of Control A, you use Command A. It's like two keys over. Um, so he was basically saying that logically, Control A makes a way more sense than Command A. Give me a break! Come on, Steve. I, I I'm not demanding a retraction or anything, but that. that you, you don't get upset about a keyboard shortcut. In fact, in Mac OS X, you can configure your keyboard shortcuts. It's just going to be different. The feature is there. The function is there. Just getting to it may be a bit different than what you're used to. And that's what you've got to get over. More than anything, if you're even considering a switch from like Linux to Windows to whatever, you have to get yourself over the hump that on that's the only way of doing something. And it took me a while, uh, you know, to get used to different keyboard shortcuts. But it, it's it's comfortable now. I mean, it's comfortable enough for me to do. I'm not um, having any issues with my keyboard shortcuts. I love them. In fact, I've got more keyboard shortcuts now than I ever had before. Um, doesn't bother me a bit. In fact, I'm a better geek because I can live inside of more than one operating system. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. They live inside of one. And I don't think they're doing themselves any favor, um, really, at all. Because you're never going to know what else is out there if you live inside. You live with blinders on. You know, if you're going around living life like this, you're not a geek. Sorry. That doesn't mean you got to rush out and, and and try something if you don't want to. You just open that door. You never know. Uh, don't cut yourself off because I don't I don't respect that at all. I just don't. I don't respect that, and I see it happen way too often. Uh, anyway, uh, it's really good top five list here, Shadow Fang. As I said, if anybody else has got some good top five list, I mean, uh, good ones. I mean, I I I I I have to. I, I I like what you guys are sending in, but I I about had enough of you know how to keep a PC clean and how to keep Windows running fast top five list seriously I get like five of them a day um, I, I, I've been there done that I'm not gonna talk about it every single day of my life sorry I, 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 I want to talk about more things uh, let's let's bring it to broader topics let's let's talk about some deeper subjects let's let's really talk about helping people with the decisions that they're going to make when they walk into a store and see all the software and wonder which one they should get you know, how do we educate uh, the world about hardware and software and making it easy to try something new? Anyway, uh, just food for thought. My email address is chris at perillo.com. I am not interested in you, t uh, you slagging somebody else's choice. I am interested in finding out what you believe uh, works for you. Uh, and if you are open or closed-minded to trying anything new, even if it's a new version of the same operating system that you're running now.
anyway. You're also welcome to join us in our chat room. We're typically talking tech, um, about anything really. Uh, but I know my my, uh, my chat room uh, loves uh, hardware, software, tips, tricks, tweaks uh, for a variety of platforms. I mean, we get a lot of the same questions come in on a daily basis. I mean, we just we're used to it now. Uh, so if someone doesn't answer you, it's probably the reason why is because the question is going to be asked in another oh ten minutes or so. Am I kidding, guys? All everyone who's in chat right now, we've got the voice turned on, so not everybody is uh, is able to talk, and we do that because we only want the the people who are trusted users to be a part of the video. Sometimes I open it up, but I don't know. Apparently, the moderators were thinking that it was easy to uh, or easier to corral people tonight. So the chat room is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.